no jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. And today, I have one of my favorite directors, in my opinion, in the building, Mr. James Larice. Ladies and gentlemen, let me get a round of applause, man, from everybody, man. There we go. Don't try to yeah. slow up on the clap up, what okay? Up? Yeah. <laughs> I love all y'all, man. How you doing today, man? I'm, I'm wonderful, man. I'm yeah. so happy to be here. I'm happy that you're here. How was the drive over here? Got in traffic? Stuck in traffic? A uh, little bit, but I mean, I'm from LA, but I live in New York, so yeah. I don't drive currently. Yeah. So when I'm back in LA and I'm back in the car and I'm driving, I like it. So yeah. it's like, you know, I was saying with my boy on the way over here, it's just like every street. You know, when you step out of Los Angeles for a period of time and you come back in, yeah. it's like everything's heightened. You know, mm. because I think every day when you see stuff, sometimes you take it for granted, you know, but when you step away and all of a sudden you're on, you know, fountain and you're going past all your spots or whatever. It's right. like, ah, oh, it just it's so vivid. I love yeah. that. So do you do you prefer do you prefer New York or L.A. at this point in your life? Where do you where do you want to reside? Well, I'll reside where my family is. My family's currently in New York. Talk to shit. Um, but. Uh, selfishly, my own. Th I'm I'm LA to the bone, like always, forever. You know what I mean? So, but New York City is amazing. It's fucking New York, you know. Yeah. So it's like, um, I think you have to find appreciation for both of them independently for what they are and what they're not, as opposed to what they're not. Because mm -hmm. the strengths of New York aren't necessarily the strengths of LA and vice versa. You mm -hmm. know. So they all they they each bring, um, I don't know, just just beautiful things in life, you know, when you're experiences. when you're capturing art, because I consider you an artist, you know, and when you're when you're capturing art, do you get a different feel from from different places? Like when you're in L.A., you're like, man, I want to shoot the video like this. I'm not going to feel like shooting it like this in New York because it's a different it's it gives yeah. me a different feel. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about I mean, that, that a little the, bit. The beauty of, you know, the beauty of any anywhere you live, if you pay attention, is that inspiration is all around you every single day, even if it's monotonous. You know what I mean? Like you have a story that you're part of and witnessing, and that's your environment, and culture, and whatnot. You know, so right. if you choose to pay attention to it, there's there's you, there's never a lack of inspiration anywhere. Right. But depending on where you live, obviously there's going to be way more inspiration than others. And and you know, Los Angeles obviously is a, is a is a city, a very special city and cultural, right? Cultural, so yeah. cultural, and and it's and it's uh, it's like islands, you know what I mean? Like LA is so spread out, and you have these pockets that are that are then connected by these freeways. And so when you're in a different area, you know what I mean? You just you absorb that culture, and that's what's so dope about Los Angeles being so big and being diverse is that you have so many different areas that you can go to and experience a completely, almost like a completely different city, different culture, different country even. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of Los Angeles. It's like a different world when mm -hmm. you step in one of those pockets you're talking about. But in New York, it's equally as, as diverse, but there's not these islands separating. You know, there is the subway that, you know, there's the five boroughs and you have the subway that separates it, but within each of the boroughs, your building is like, you know, when you're a kid, your 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 class is diverse. You know, you're, you, there's so many kids in your neighborhood are of all different cultures, and and where I live is in Queens, which is very very um very very diverse. And so, like my son in his class is, he's he's half Spanish and half white, but he looks more white. And in his class, besides him, there's only like two other white looking kids. You know what I mean? Which is crazy because is like he? he's nine. But like even in L.A his class would be, you know, majority white kids, you know what I mean? And, and in Los Feliz where, where we stay out here. And, uh, you know what I mean? So it's, it's interesting. So it's like, they have different ways. Like in New York, it's, it's diverse, but it's, you're also diverse right next to each other. In LA, it's diverse, but it, there, there is a little bit more of a separation. Um, so that inspires in different ways, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, like for instance, for instance, in New York, the train, man. I mean, yeah. the train is an experience. Like coming from LA, you, you know, our train is, <laughs> you know, I don't even need to speak on it. Like, yeah. it, there's no comparison. <laughs> Here, you're in your car. Your car's like your office or your studio or you know your place to think as you're going to a meeting or whatever. You know, that's that's your that's your office away from your home, away from home, or whatever on wheels. But in New York, you don't have that. So you know, the subway is is um, 
you know, it, it just, it, it's a whole nother experience. Mm -hmm. And to experience that later in life, you know, I'm not, you know, 20 years old experiencing it, you know, I'm older now. So it's like to, to experience that later in life, the inspiration that that brings, it, it gives me that youthful, inspired feeling from when I was a little kid, you know what I mean? So, well, I love that. Speaking of, you know, because you, people need, you've worked with Sweetie, T-Pain, like you've, Lil Wayne, the list goes on and the people that like you've been able to be a part of capturing what we say is art, you know? But I wanna dive in more to, we could talk about a, you know, the formative year, but I wanna jump into what made you even dig into this line of work? Like what even made you start, man? Directing, like even wanting to be behind a camera and say, hey. I mean, uh, real talk. Take your time. I've wanted to do, I've wanted to direct music videos specifically since I was eight years old, wow. period. What was the first thing you felt? And that like? motherfucker right there, I've known since I was five years old, and he was there. And so the, you know, so the, the for me, music, I don't know what it is, man. Since I was a kid, you know, since I was little, little, music is just there. You know what I mean? Music's the foundation of everything. It's my heartbeat. Also, I think when my, my oldest, my best friend, like, you know, music was always a big part of him. So together we just uh you know i think we we vibed off each other you know what i mean and it was always it was always always about music and so when mtv came along right um that just blew it just blew my mind man it's just it's weird like something about a music video and its length it sets you know it's it's specific um existence is because of a song that inspired it Therefore, you're putting the visual to the sound. Like th that connection, I, you know, I couldn't have articulated it then, but that's I agree, what I connected 100%. with. You know what I mean? I'm a, very, yeah. I'm a very visual person, but I also know that in my life, what has inspired me the most is when I can connect with more senses than just like your eyes or just your ears. Like I want to, I want to give you an experience, you know, with what I, with what I do. You know, one of the ways I measure like a, a dance video, for instance, is at some point I'll watch it without any audio. And if I'm bobbing to it, then I got it. Cause it's about catching that, you know, it's just getting in that pocket with the music and having it find that, that balance where you, you're, you're giving a visual equivalent to the, to the sound that you're listening to, you know what I mean? And that, you know, that's something that is just, that has always been there in me, that fascination. I could give a fuck, you know, about uh, doing a Pringles commercial or a, uh, you know, you know, longer formats and this and that, you know, at some times, yeah. you know, look, there's a time and place for all of that, you know, and, and right. trust me, I've done right. it all. I've done all that and I right. continue to do that, you know. Right. The beauty of being a director is that there's a very diverse range of things that you can do. Um, it's not just cookie cutter stuff anymore. So uh, it's, it's a really exciting time to be living in that space. Um, I forgot, I forgot what the question was. Oh, since I was eight years old, man. So it's just been with me my whole life. Like that's, that's the thing is music and visuals, music and visuals. You know, we, we, we were having bands. I decided to start playing the drums. He, my, my buddy was playing guitar. So I started taking the drums. I, I started in like fifth grade and you know, I was mediocre at best, you know what I mean? Like we were in bands going, you know, growing up or whatever. And, and I was just, I was like, okay, you know what I mean? But it was about the passion for me, you know what I mean? And it was, and it was like, it was just about that position and being part of these group of individuals that are creating music, you know? Could and you then, say it was a piece of MTV that maybe it's, because you had to see it somewhere when you were young, you know, like either oh, yeah. you wanted to be in that music video or something had to yeah, lit yeah. that fuel, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. flame in you. That's what it, that, it, it was definitely that, you know, yeah. is, is um, I mean, the music video was always the thing. And what was funny is I never had cable. I didn't have cable as a kid. So we didn't have MTV in my house. And that was mostly just because of, uh, my, par my parents were like, if you have time to watch a television show, you can go do this or read a book or be outside or something like that. Like, don't waste your time with television, which is funny because ultimately that's what I do <laughs> now. But <laughs> right, right. because of that, I would always, it, it, that's, that fueled the fire even more because I was always like, hey, can I go over to so-and-so's house, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'd, I just started going to people's houses that had cables so I could watch TV, you know what I mean? And, and I would just be that kid like, 
knocking on someone's door and they'd be eating dinner and then I'd be like, hey, let me just go back and I'll be go back and watch like I remember them days. A series like, of like real. the police videos. And had a shit. friend you used to use like that. I'm like, I ain't really yeah. his friend, but he's got yeah. cable. You know, he's got MTV. Yeah. So I'm gonna slide yeah. up and just go say his parents love and, me, and, man. And, I don't and, like him, but fuck yeah. it. It's a it's kind of a dick move, but but it's endearing because you don't quite you're not trying to be a dick. It's you don't just understand, like, man. Yeah. You're a kid. You don't yeah. you don't know that's what you're being. You're yeah. just you're just trying to see some things, man. But that dub that double made it made me a fiend. And yeah. So I just it was just about seeing it and being part of you know the countdowns and who's dropping what and all that and you know that, that it was just there my whole, entire life, man. Until. Yeah. Um, now <laughs> I'm still like it. I'm still like it. Have you have you ever been excited to shoot something and then you do it and it doesn't come out the way you planned or oh, expect? Absolutely. To where you're like, man, this needs a do over. Like we don't even need to put this out. And yeah. you probably put in a lot of time in it too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I've dude, I've had every experience you can imagine like that. I've had stuff where it's finally. You're about to deliver it, and then it gets shelved completely. It never sees the light of day. You know what I mean? And, you, and they've spent X amount of dollars, and they did this and that. And sometimes it could be, you know, it could be because of something that's happening in pop culture for some reason or whatever. Or it could be, you know, uh, ultimately it's not the direction they wanted to go. That's usually what it is. You know, at the end of the day, when they finally get there, it's like they want to go back to, you know, Safe I just feel like, James, I feel like it sucks because it's like you put all this X amount of time into it. It's actually becoming stressful. You're having problems at home. You're supposed to be somewhere yeah. else, but you're spending this extra time. It's It's got to feel pretty shitty when you put your time in and the outcome is where, oh, well, we're just going to shelf it. You know, Absolutely. or this, or the better words of what you said. This isn't the direction. That's mm -hmm. I swear that that shit means so many words. Of it could be <laughs> it ain't shit. Fuck this. Why'd you even yeah. give this to us? Yeah, it's just sure. a professional way of just saying, hey, that ain't the direction that we we, we, yeah. we want to go. Yeah. Some people just don't even say nothing and just block you. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, that's true. <laughs> you, more so is like submitting ideas. You know, because a big part of what I do is. You know, I'll I'll be sent music. Then from there, it's like you decide if you're gonna you know submit an idea on it or something like that. And and then if you do, then you've got to write a treatment. And you know, everyone is savvy nowadays. I mean, it's not just like this a word document anymore. Like you know, you're giving visual references that are like embedded gifs and like all you know. Every people are doing test projects for it and. Um, animatics and all this stuff so you know you can't just kind of phone in these treatments but you know so you'll spend a lot you know sometimes i'll do like a 20 20 page treatment on a song that i'm really going for and then you just won't ever hear from them again you know what i mean and it's just it's like it's got to be a little discouraging, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, after a while, it's like, look, that's what it is. That's I mean, the you don't, game. You don't go tell the world, James, I'm sure. But, yeah. you know, you, yeah. people, you feel it, though. Deep Absolutely. down inside, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's like a, it's a small cut. It's yeah. like a small little razor cut. Yeah. But, you know, if you can't, but if you can't handle, if you can't handle that, then this is not your business. You know what I mean? Because, like, this is a thick skin business across the board. You know what I mean? Whether it's, you know, directing, acting, being a musician, whatever. Excuse me. I just, Oh, go ahead. Um, I love because the viewers need to hear this for the people that mm. are inspiring. They need to hear people that have walked these these footsteps already, man. Yeah, man, dude. I hear. I mean, I hear no. Probably, uh, definitely more than fifty percent of the time that I hear yes, if not more, maybe seventy five percent of the time. But let's you know? look at the ones that have been yes. They've been yeah huge. Absolutely. Huge factors. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, it's like that's the thing is is that, you know, like what you're saying, it being like a paper cut or, you know, yeah. something along those lines, like, you know, it, it you for all of those no's are a different paper cut. Yeah. And then that begins to heal over and then it's like scar tissue and then yeah. more and more and before you know it, you're thick, right? You right. got you got that thick skin. Right. And that's that's what it takes, you know what I mean? Is because um at the end of the day, you can't ask why, you know what I mean? You just can't because right. once it's no, it's no, it's it's done. If you try to ask why, like you're 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 trying to figure out something that 
is not going to make sense to you because you're not going to agree with it because they said no. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you need to just just on to the next one. You know what I mean? But and, don't you agree that that's where people always run into that roadblock? They don't. It, it's it's hard to take rejection. I think for yes. anybody. Yes. You know, rejection is one of the the hardest pills to swallow. I think in anybody's life. Mm -hmm. You know, is to be rejected, especially at something you know you really put your all into. Yes. You know, so I know that's got to be, it, it doesn't just cut, that's a mind fuck. Yeah. It's a mind fuck because you spent 20 hours probably fucking going delirious yeah. trying to, you know, put together this perfect piece of art that you want to present to somebody and for them not to even give it two seconds, they just breeze through it. You're like, damn. Like, yeah. I, you know what I meant? The first yeah. page took me four hours alone. Yeah. You just fucking scrolled through it in two yeah. seconds? Or, or how about like for real? Or how about sometimes? Sometimes it, it won't even get to the artist. Sometimes there'll be you know a you know a, a person that's in the pipeline of getting to the artist. It's always like a video game, right? You have all right. these layers that you have to get through to get you know to boss mode or whatever the boss level. Right. But like so along those ways, sometimes it, it'll stop at one person, and for whatever reason, maybe they even forget to afford it or they themselves don't like it therefore they don't even give it an opportunity it won't even get to the artist and that that's what gets frustrating because it's like there's been times when say even years later I'll run into an artist who I'm like dude why didn't come on man that was an amazing idea like why didn't we even talk about it you know what I mean and they'll just be like and this could also just be the artist like not knowing or, just, or, or blowing whatever, it or off just too. blowing it off too yeah. exactly yeah. but those, yeah. but um you know sometimes they're just like dude I, I honestly never saw it you know what i mean and so um you and know, i do believe that and yeah. it's like I, I think that some people need to actually allow the, di the director and the artist to actually link because they're the people that are about to get ready to create this content Yes. You know? Yes. But I that, get the investors, yeah. James. I get that part. And I don't mm -hmm. mean to interrupt, mm -hmm. but no, like I get that part of the, you know, the investors have a lot to say in what plays. Mm -hmm. But let the director and the artist come together to create. That's what's going to be the determining factor of all of this shit. It's right. not about what's perfect because what might be good for the goose might not be good for the gander, you know? It might not be good for him. He probably's like, y'all pick me some shit, y'all throw me in a light. This doesn't make me feel comfortable. Where's that other guy at, James? The goal. Where's that guy? Like I said. Why couldn't we have worked with him? Well, you know how they say, yeah. well, you know, he didn't fit for what we were trying yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's, again, why you can't ask the question why. Because, like, it's an agenda that doesn't involve you. So you say directing is not a why game. You can't do that. You're going to lose. Yeah, I think you can't pay attention to those type of things. It's it's onward and upward always because, you know, if I'm told no 75% of the time, 25% uh, of that time is going to have to make up for the rejection in order for me to want to continue moving on. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that 25%, the the joy or the advancement or the whatever, you know, uh, the positive you know, the positive effects of that 25% should be massive enough to accommodate understanding, well, 75% I'm going to get rejected, but this 25% is going to be so good, it's going to make that 75% worth it. You know what I mean? And that's just how I go, you know? And it, that's just, it, it kind of worked for me, um, you know? And this I, is like that, huh, for the big dogs. Like when you really sit down with like a real top end director like somebody this is really their stories they're like i don't get picked as much as you think yeah but when i do yeah, yeah. it's fucking yeah. major but i think the reason that is is because people are scared they won't live up to your expectation that's why you probably don't get a lot of calls they're probably like man working with him i gotta really bring something they're not gonna say that because that actually puts doubt in them of who they really are that questions themselves like damn if I ever said, mm. like, damn, I'm, I'm not fucking with James because I don't think that I can bring something that he's going to want to capture, I'll never say that. I'll just say, no, I don't want to work with him. Yeah, it's I, easier, yeah, right? Yeah. Instead I'm, of telling the truth. I think also because they, <laughs> because I, uh, you know, look. Talk a your lot shit. Of, take lot of, your time. See, I see it's yeah, rushing to your end. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. your ass open. It's I'm rushing have to, to his head. I'm going like, to have to light you up. You want to know about this shit? <laughs> All I'm right, just trying to worry, I'm just trying to say it, say it the right yeah. way, but you know, yeah. like, 
I would say that um, a big part of it is is uh, champagne taste and Kool Aid money. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so like everyone everyone wants a Porsche, but no one wants to pay for a Porsche. You know what I mean? So that's right. a big problem. Right. And that that's what happens is that you always know, notice those dealerships are empty. Yeah. Lexus full of life, Toyota full yeah. of life. You go into Aston Martin, Bentley, anything like that, it's one old lady up in there. You know what I'm saying? Getting her oil change. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's like, I, you know, look, I've, and, and that's not to say, like, <laughs> you know, I don't put a price on things. It really is about the artist, it really yeah. is about the music, 100%. Right. right. I, look at my resume, you'll see, like, I'll I'll do new artists all the time. You know, I last year I worked, I think it was last year, maybe last year or two years ago, I worked with this kid named Breland, who's a country music star, but he's a black kid from uh DC. Mm. And wow, he's fucking amazing, mix. man. He's amazing. He's amazing. And he's he's blown up. Like he's doing his thing and 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 whatnot. But like, you know, they didn't have a lot of of they had a lot of like positive backing for him, but they, you know, financially they didn't have a lot to go on but the song was so amazing and i really really enjoyed the artist and in his management so you know i i jumped in head first and went for it so it's not it, it really isn't about the money and 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 um because i know that a solid song that inspires a beautiful visual told the right way is going to add many zeros to the next project that's inspired by that you know what I mean? Are you open, uh, and a question for you, are you open to working with up and coming artists that are Absolutely. maybe just on SoundCloud at the moment, you know, and yeah. haven't really got a big break, but they're buzzing in their area, you know? Are you are you open for that, or are you just going to stay yeah. more mainstream? I'm, no, 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 absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely open to it, you know? It just, the situation has to be right. I have to understand, you know, um, they can't be knuckleheads, you know what I mean? Like, they, they just, it's like, you know, things have got to be, um, you know, and the, there has to be a level of professionalism for sure. You want people you know? that are willing to work yeah. pretty much. Like, they want to put in the work. They're just as hungry. But, like, like for instance, my uh, 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 my family is uh, uh, Ojeezy from Shoreline Mafia. And oh. he... Ojeezy, um, Shoreline Mafia. It's, <laughs> he's the, yeah, he, he's yeah, the, he's the father. father of my grandson. Basically, he's with my daughter, and he is part of uh, this crew, Shoreline Mafia. Or he was part of Shoreline Mafia, and um, you know, big big part of LA, you know, yeah. underground and stuff. I mean, yeah. when he was a kid, he used to sleep on my couch when he was a kid, you know, and and be like, you he's know, probably like, man, fuck him. Why is he putting my business on blast yeah, right yeah, now, I know. man? I know, I know. <laughs> I told I him, him I was coming I on know. here. I told him I was coming on here. If I was here. him, I, I know wherever you at, bros. I, I, I felt it for you, dog. Like, damn, he put my motherfucking business out there, bro. Okay, I did sleep on your couch for a month. No, but what I'm going to say is this, is that Talk I, like, for, you know, I'm, I bring him up because when you're talking about working with young artists, yeah. is that I saw, I saw him, in his rise, and I saw the hustle and the dedication and the work. Like I saw it firsthand, and I took it for granted. You know what I mean? Like you know, he he you know he came from humble beginnings. You and know, shot and, a video for him. And when when we used to when he would stay over and we would hang out or whatever, he would say, you know, one day like you know one day you, you know we joke about doing a video for him. I was like, yeah, you know, when you get a budget or whatever, and. <laughs> He got a uh, damn no family discount. Yeah, <laughs> he said, talk about getting a budget. He's it's like, busy, yeah, music business, Dr. baby. Trading, bro. He yeah. said, yeah, you know, I love you, but when you get that budget <laughs> right, you know, man. Well, what about you? you got no, this is my money. You know what I'm saying? This is my bread, bro. Oh, no, you gotta he, get your uh, own. But he, uh, uh, yeah, it, you know. So they they hustled it. They got a great deal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I did. So I did. I did a video. It was. It was a video for the song uh, "Musty" that they. It, I guess it was. A, you know, one of the bigger, bigger mm -hmm. songs. Mm -hmm. And they had already done a video for it, but like in a true record label fashion, they wanted to take what was already working and try to redo it. And what I did, I don't think was really like in their style necessarily, you know. But it was just an opportunity to break them into a mainstream look, and you know, just in and just kind of introduce them into that industry. Uh, the industry side of things, you know, and, and, uh, so it's cool. But anyways, for instance, he's someone that like, you know, 
anything he would ever need or anything like that, I would definitely work with him or anyone he would ever co-sign, you know, for sure. Um, I think the main thing is just making sure, you know, that they're real and they're about what they're doing and they're not just phoning it in, you know what I mean? And that's why I always appreciated him. So I do have hope in young artists, you know, sometimes I, I, I wonder because it's so, it's so easy now to, to break, you know, so quickly. Um, if people are, are really prepared for the work, you know, it's one thing to break, it's another thing to stay and have longevity, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when someone breaks so early and they're hot right then and they're, you know, everything's popping for them, that's great and everyone wants a piece of them, but they're not learning anything. I was just you know talking I mean? last night about one hit wonders and how like they come out, right? They like, they break out on this one song and this one song is the shit for however long and then they, they just don't bring any press behind it. It's like, I don't know if you're still making music and it, maybe it's not panning out, but I, I've just noticed there be like a lot of one hit wonders. But nonetheless, I got a question for you. Like how much, what's the most money you've ever seen spent on a set? like that you've had a chance to be a part of, not even names, but just you've had a chance of just being a part of. You've seen spent like fuck. They spent a fucking gaggle of money to, you know what I'm saying, to put this into production. Oh, right, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that, huh? Yeah. That, I mean, the money. <laughs> I would say, I would say like, yeah, the money. I mean, it's always, yeah. it's. it's it, it plays, come on, man. It plays a huge part. It is. Look, the, the idea obviously is is extremely important. That's how I know you've seen a lot because you didn't even answer the question. You kind of actually deflected wait, 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 what it. what was it? The question was, what? how much money have you ever seen spent on a production of a music video like that you've had a chance to be a part of? The most expensive, like the most expensive video that like I've that done? You no, know, like that you, you've had a chance to even be a part of, maybe there might've been two other directors or it might've been, you know what I'm saying? You, oh. one other guy. Well, I do know. And you, you know that they spent like fucking, this video could have cost a fucking a million bucks or I, two million bucks. You well, know? I think the the most expensive video, if I'm not wrong, is "Scream" by Michael and Janet Jackson. That was seven million dollars. And then uh, I got to remember, you have been in the game for a long. No, no, no long I haven't been time. that long. But but yeah. I do know that that was uh, Mark Romanek. I think was the director, and it was like a massive. You know, it was like Michael Jackson. So well, and it was him. You? What have you had the opportunity of the, being a the, part of? I've I've definitely I've definitely done uh, a million plus. Right, and we're not talking about what went in your pocket, just for what investors put into yeah. the production. Like, no, no, well, no, like bi videos. Like yeah. I'd say the most expensive video that I've had that I've been a part of that I've been the director of mm -hmm. is in probably one point three, one point four. That's a fucking chunk. A that's big, a big, big chunk. chunk. But I, I will mean, that's, say that's Drake numbers because Drake and them will spend a million on a video. You know what I'm saying? Like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but those and look who that is. You know what but I'm saying? So is, I know that's that level. Yeah. I mean, this is this is also I've been doing this 18 years. You know what I mean? So um, there's and there's always weird instances a where and a half for a video, James. Yeah. Fuck, homie. Yeah. A video to put out this one thing. <laughs> this one fucking thing, bro. Like it's for a three minute it's song. It's crazy. I know. As fuck. And when you think about it, it's like <coughs> you know. And it was it was great and fun. And and I and and I think it, it you know it it did what it was supposed to do. Um, mm -hmm. I think it looks the the amount that was spent on it, but that doesn't guarantee a hit. You know what I mean? And right. it really still always comes down to the music. You know, because like if it's if it's not a good song and you make this incredible video, um, that's only gonna do so much. It still comes back to the music, you know what I mean? Always. Well, I'll have to, I'm, 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 I agree to a certain extent mm -hmm. because back to what you were saying earlier, a song really ain't, and you didn't say it like that, but I'll put it in my words, okay. a song really ain't shit without the visual. People want to see it. Like, if you're rapping about something, right? You rapping about, well, I don't give a fuck if it was killing this motherfucker on 24th Street, you popped him. Or you was selling dope over here, you lived in the trenches. People are going to want to see you put a visual to that. They're going to want to see you paint that. They're going to want to see you in that light. I don't feel like people's music will go far without, vi without vi visuals. 
I, I just don't see, especially in today's era with streaming. This especially isn't this today. isn't a CD the CD era anymore, where everybody's yeah. just kind of pushing CDs. Your music kind of yeah. just moves word of mouth. You got to have visual, baby. Yeah. And that's yeah. where people like you really play a determining factor today. That's why I didn't understand when you were like, well. I mean, if you're into this type of stuff, Sharp, of course I am, because the people yeah. that it's the people that are behind the cameras that don't get enough shine. Right. Because without y'all, none of this shit would ever even be possible. I don't know how to run these cameras. I mean, I'm sure I can learn, but that's not my either. job. My job is to sit back and create. Mm -hmm. That's my job. I can't worry about two, three, four other jobs. So I respect the people that stand behind the camera or get together, you know what I'm saying, just get together everything that's going on from even right over there running the boards, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or publicists, like people that just, you know what I'm saying, Trev, Kelvin, Bossa, like just mm -hmm. people that move, fill with the camera, like people who, yeah. I, I, I work with these kind of guys, man, and they, they don't get the shine they fucking deserve, you know, so to even see you being on one of the biggest, and I have to ask you, man, I, I gotta know this, sure. I gotta know this. Did you have anything to do, because I know that you've worked with Eminem. Mm -hmm. You've had a chance to work with Eminem. Where, did you have anything to do with when they shot that Empire State Building video? Yeah. The Venom? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. That had to be, listen to me, and I think The Office, we were actually watching it, me and another guy, another editor that's here, another guy that, that moves around. We were talking about it like that had to have been one of the most extra fucking, I don't think anybody's topping that. That of one, Eminem on top of the Empire State Building. Yeah, it was, it was like, crazy, Like, who's man. doing that with the helicopters coming yeah. around it, bro? Yeah, it was... And ugly. people are filming from the fucking street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, that was... Tell me about that experience, man. I, I, I wanted to. to ask if you were a part of it before we just dove yeah. in. But now that I know that you yeah. were that guy, I mean, let's go ahead and get it. I mean, honestly, if that if you include that as, like, a, a video... It's a fucking then that legendary one, I don't, I don't milestone. Even, I don't even know the... The budget for that, that was pretty No, nuts, fuck you know the I mean? budget, just the experience. Yeah. We know what was spent on it. Yeah. I'm but, sure. But the I don't even think that money even played a determinative factor in yeah, that part. But but dude, it it was well here here's here's the what it was is basically every year Jimmy Kimmel does he spends Which a, it was it was shot on Jimmy yeah, Kimmel. He spends Correct. a week in New York. Mm -hmm. He's originally from Brooklyn. He goes back to Brooklyn and he does a week of the Jimmy Kimmel show in New York. So, um, I've I've worked very very uh, consistently with Eminem for many many years since about two thousand eight, and uh, so they were gonna he was gonna perform. So it was like this this thing. He has the song Venom. It was out. He was gonna do this performance. When he did it for the Venom movie. Correct. Correct. Which exactly. was dope. It was dope. Yeah, yeah. And the, and and they did it. They did an actual music video for that as well. Um, but this was going to be like you know a separate performance, live performance that we were going to shoot live. Eminem's um, always in rare form if he's doing anything. It's, yeah, it's rare form for yeah. him, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's yeah he's amazing. I mean, he's a, he is a genius, dude. He's he's. He's a genius. That's that video, if, if for any for any editor or anybody that like even likes just to even just directing anything, like that shit was iconic with Eminem on top of the fucking Eiffel Tower, like or the fucking Empire yeah. State Building. Yeah. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? Sitting there just fucking going around in circles. <laughs> like I'm like, what's he yeah. doing? Like, where is he going, bro? And like yeah. just to shoot it live like that was it just was crazy. It was fucking amazing. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, look, and here's the thing. We shot it a week before the Kimmel show, before it was gonna air. And then we were and then it was like it was planned out where on that day that it was going to air Kim will throw it you know to them and then it would seem as if it was happening right then so because we did that a week ahead of time mm -hmm. it had to be a secret so how do you do you know what i mean with in new york in how new do you make that a secret <laughs> like i'm for real you out man on the empire state y'all up there fucking it's like filming we, on the we empire. couldn't let it be known because then everyone would know that it wasn't live when it actually aired you know all this stuff right. so i mean people do that all the time but right. when they shoot things but um so basically we had from the 70th floor up uh, of the Empire State Building for, I'd say, about two days to, like, rehearse and sequence the lights of the Empire State Building to the song. So when we would play the song, the lights of the Empire State Building would pulse to the beat. They change it, you know, um, 
throughout the year, like for like uh, breast cancer awareness, they'll it'll be pink or you know stuff like that. So they're always changing the lights, but we had it actually just pulsating to the beat, like this crazy light show, and that. And then we had two helicopters. We had a helicopter which I saw. It was crazy. Yeah, circling, I think. we had a, we had a helicopter that was filming his performance, but then we had a helicopter shooting that helicopter shooting him. So because I want. I wanted to take advantage of the fact we were actually using helicopters, so I wanted to be able to shoot the helicopter in the shot. So. It looked crazy because it looked like there was a lot going on yeah. up there. That we're like, they got yeah. helicopters fucking circling it, man. Yeah. Eminem is is amazing, and I'll be real to have you on as a director and somebody who is who put your visual to that is is iconic, bro. Oh. And you deserve your flowers indefinitely. Oh man, I. Look, like, I, I get it. Like, you're, you, that's how I am, too, with certain things and the things I've done. People tell me, I'm like, yeah, no, I appreciate you, you know, but I, I, I feel you. You pretty much told me right now the work ain't done, Sharp. We're just getting started, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. The work ain't done. And, and I will say something about what you were saying about recognizing people behind the camera, which I, I is admirable, and I, I, I appreciate it, and I'm sure everyone here works their ass off, and they appreciate it. But part of making the decision to be of the team behind the camera mm. part of making that decision is like not is understanding that we're not it's not about the recognition it's about when this airs and when this gets out and the work that we put into and those sleepless nights and all that stuff when that finally is like the reality of like the world is seeing it and it's live and it's you know whatever like that's the reward you know they do it for the work for the love because they love production they love everything that goes into it they um you know of course, everyone loves to 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 hear it and and hear thank you and and get recognized. But um, you know, I think that's what makes this whole machine work. Is like the mentality of behind the camera mixed with the mentality in front of the camera, and how they bring different strengths. And that's what makes this whole thing function and work. It's pretty amazing. It is amazing, man. I'll, I'll be real with you. I love just even sitting back and just talking with you. Like our conversation just is everywhere <laughs> i love it no but it but it makes so much sense because yeah. i've never got to talk to like a real director somebody who's i have but to sit back and like pick your brain mm. and like you have so much of this uh, so much knowledge to like give to people who are up and coming and inspiring to even do something like this and letting them know like you pretty much let the world know like hey you don't always have to be in front of the camera you can be behind it too and still be as big or as detrimental to the situation more than you know, you know? You don't have to hate on the next person. You have to be bad. No, find something. I don't give a fuck if you know it. Find, be the best light holder. That's right. Be the, 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 everybody has a strength, man. And like, I like how you said, like it builds, a, it's a team, man. It, it's it what makes the machine work. Well, it's also a humbling experience when you, when, you under, when you fully understand that it takes every single person yeah. to make a production go smoothly. You know yeah. what I mean? No matter what that job is, you know, yeah. it, could, it could be sweeping the floors or taking out the trash or getting coffee or, you know, directing or producing or starring in it, whatever it is, everyone has to work together. It has to be on this wavelength. You guys have to all be on the, in this, when it's done properly, it, it's, 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 it's like jazz, man. It's like everyone's just jamming and, and, and all of a sudden the frequency starts to connect. And when it, when it all, connects and everyone's working together and the horns are perfect and the drums are cool and the bass is working and everything just kind of like is flowing and you're getting through your day because you did all the work and the planning and and preparation and and you you have everything under control that you can control and anything you can't control you're just like you're gonna you, you're experienced so you'll just cross that bridge when you come to it but you just go with it and you flow and we, it's like surfing almost or something you know and when you're on that and 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 you get into it and the artist is into it you know what i mean i'm speaking more so to you're music, talking that lingo right now man but go like ahead, when you're with it shit. and everyone's on that wave man it's yeah. like it must be the feeling of like like one of my really good friends is a photographer and does like you know stadium shoots and stuff and he'll be on stage sometimes in front of like 80,000 people taking photos you know and it's just it's it's like he says you feel that thing you know you just feel that energy you know the artist feels that energy and um that's what I feel on the, when it when it all works together and everyone's everyone's in a rhythm and everyone just has like 
you know, just the same goal and you're this like hive mind, you know what I mean? You're all speaking the same language, everything's working smoothly and, and, and then you get to the end of the day, everyone's happy, you got everything you needed and you can all sit back and just have a breath of like, yo, that was fucking, that was sick. You I'm know? not gonna say I've mastered it like yourself, but you know, I've gotten into directing and I've done it for a little while and just, it's, it's something that comes over you like when you're when you're sitting yeah. there and you're trying to capture a vision. Yeah. Like I want to bring something to life. It's a story. Like even with music videos, I've been a part of music videos, I've helped direct music videos and things like that. Not to your level, of sure. course not, but nonetheless, I, I try, you yeah. know? And yeah, yeah. like just even being there, like the way I see a certain vision for it, man, and I try to connect it, I tell a story. Yeah. It's a story that we tell. I listen to the music and I want this video to damn near match up and be identical to what the artist is saying. You know, whatever he's mentioning, key points, they have to be there. Yeah. You know, it's it's important, man. Yeah. Just capturing that image, man, and just that visual of somebody, man, and just, because it's forever. Once it's shot, it's Absolutely. shot. Absolutely. Just like this. Once this shit is shot, this is one of one. Mm-hmm. This conversation probably, it, it will not, I can't even say probably won't, it will not ever happen the same. Right. That's why I love it. <laughs> That's why I love it because because this is what you what you see is what you get here. It, it's like you know it's like Tyson said it's uh, uh, all your preparation goes out the window the second you get punched in the nose right mm. you know it's just like that's when it's real is when you're in it and and so you know something like this and sitting down it's like that's why uh, you know I know enough I didn't want to get deep into I don't want to go down a rabbit hole and and learn too much about you or anything because. Um, I don't like to have any kind a of pre yeah, preconceived notions or, you know, right. any kind of influence or whatever. And I, I love to just like meet people and get to know them for who they are. And it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. We just vibe, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, this was and, more of a, um, I want to say like a reflection behind the lights, you know, kind of ordeal of just kind of sitting back with a top end fucking director, like somebody who's really been around this shit, man. And just... Let, like I said, let the view, it, it was to let the viewers know, like anybody who's inspiring, this man's done been through it. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that are trying to get into directing right now or trying to, you know, whether it's photography or just anything yeah. that captures a moment. Anything that captures, and I feel like that shit runs abroad. You know what I'm saying? Anything to capture a moment to hear your story, like, and just hear your outlook on things or your take on things. And, you know, you, that you can look at it eight different ways. You don't have to look at it just in one way, man. Always capture it eight different ways. Yeah. Eight different ways anything can play out. I Yeah, I mean, look, I think it's a really exciting time for anyone who's looking to, to get into, you know, filmmaking of any sort because um, the protocol isn't what it used to be. You know what I mean? Now it's it's from you to everyone, right? I mean, you can upload something and you you get your own following, and you don't need the traditional ways of how things are created. You know, and so, um, and with with without having that limit, you know, that that barrier as like a limitation in in front of them, they're they're able to just be creative, you know, and just get it out. So that's I mean, I love. I never laugh as hard as I do when I see some of the stuff that people are putting out online or whatever, yeah. you know, it's just the, the amount of creativity. It just shows how creative the average person can be. It's just uh, traditionally not the average person gets to be seen, right? Because right. there's these gate holder, gatekeepers of who would be able to get on television or something along those lines. So the very funnel true. was very, very thin, where now that funnel is very, very broad yeah, because anyone broad. can get out. So now you're seeing that, you know what, it's not just like four people that are that funny that get on TV. Everyone's, you know, there's a lot Got of people out there that have their niche and their, yeah. and their talent or whatever, yeah. and they finally have this platform to be able to put it out, and therefore it's creating more and more opportunity. And it's a very, in a, in a very like technological, uh, I guess within the technology of like social media and stuff like that, it's a, right. it, YouTube it's a very, and like that. within that, yeah. it's a very organic process in how it all grows, you know what I mean? And, right. and uh, I think it's great, man. I, and, and I think the opportunity and to create your own lane and your own position, a lot of people who are, uh, you know, that get with, um, 
you know, get it with young artists, you know, and they'll be like their photographer or, or you know, I see that a lot now is, is um, young photographers that travel with artists and they'll, uh, you know, do all their social media and put little videos together for them and, you know, things like that to keep things, you know, keep content coming out. And the stuff that they're doing and the, the, how fast they're doing it and with a good artistic eye is incredible, you know? So I see a lot of just um, people uh, embracing the the technology that they're a part of and the way that filmmaking is is being created um, in this technology and using it in very creative ways. It's insane. So I don't know. I think it's great. I love seeing what people are coming out with. You know, and yeah, I think like yeah. the the you know the young kids like um, you know the the amount of creativity that's being produced without the limitations of getting it out to the world. Uh, it's cool because it allows you to do something. If it fails, you you know quickly that it didn't work, and you can readjust and do another one. Yeah, you don't have and to then, wait for it to catch word yeah, of mouth to come back to exactly. you and say, "Hey, it was trash," and you've been working on it for two years. You can find out in fucking five minutes if that shit's gonna be something. <laughs> people Straight people will let up. you know very quick. And they're yes. gonna let you know very yeah. quick if this shit was hot or if it was not. Yeah, but I think I think it's important, man. I mean that that people first, it starts with a dream, right? Mm -hmm. You have to you have to have the want to even attempt to do it, you know what I mean? And I think that's, um, you know, when you have that, the hardest part is narrowing down what it is you wanna do. Like, right. if you're trying to be a creative, a lot of people are like, I wanna do something creative, I don't know exactly what, or, you know, um, the model these days is different, the lines are blurred, so you can kind of float even, you know? and um, so I think like my advice would be like, you know, to first really try to narrow down what that, what that want is, you know, you feel this desire to be creative, like how, how do you want to be creative? You know? And I think that's a lot of people's roadblocks, mm -hmm. though, James. Mm -hmm. Like you understand it because you've actually, like I said, you've went through the blood, sweat and tears. You've actually had to feel some shit mm -hmm. from this. But for the ones that are coming up that they might actually be great at this, but they get that roadblock and don't know how to get over the wall. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Those are the ones that I worry for, man. Yeah. The ones that are catching that roadblock, man. Like, and I just want to see them get over that wall. And I think somebody like you can be very inspiring to them as a creator. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, it, and it, I mean, but that's the thing is that we can be our own worst enemy. And that's probably your very first obstacle in getting into this creative world mm -hmm. um, is that you have to be able to get out of your own way, otherwise you're never gonna be able to get around anybody else, you know, any other dividers. You know, if you're always in front of yourself, then you're never gonna be able to see around that. So you first have to address whatever that wall is. And the best way through it or around it is through it, you know? And so um, a lot of times it's addressing stuff, you know, because it's addressing stuff within, you know, analyzing yourself. Why do I have this block? You know, I mean, it can get deep. I don't want to get like and deep I get into it, it, but just I'm, I'm, and I'm keeping it surface level. Got you it. know, I'm trying to keep it surface level of just like, and I think you broke that down. Like people that have those blocks, like here, man, there's some things you can do. Like just yeah. figure out what what it is and how you can remove it. Exactly. You Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. And then and then once you 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 kind of figure out how to get out of your own way. Um, I don't know. It, it, I think that allows you to really focus on what that that aspect is. If it's directing, um, you know, focusing on the creative and not questioning yourself, you know, and being able to, you know, make a decision and stick with that decision and not not say it with a question like, well, maybe we should do that. I guess we could do that. You know, it's well, got to be. People regret too, decisions we're doing too that. much these days. You yeah. know, they regret their decisions, yeah. so therefore they're scared from them. They'll run from making yeah. decisions because they're so afraid of making the wrong one. Yeah, you know. So they they rather not even engage. Yeah, I think it's just, it's just, you know, there is a lot of like 
just really understanding yourself and what you want and, and what you're trying to, you know, what kind of stories you want to tell, what kind of visuals you want to show. Like, yeah. you know, it's really kind of understanding yourself because those are going to be the first questions that you get asked by anybody. Yeah. Yeah. What's this going to be? How's that going to look? Yeah. What, how are they going to move? Where's the camera going to be? You know, and if you don't have that all worked out and you don't know that this is what I want it to look like going into a situation, yeah. then you know, no one's going to have confidence in you. Well, you know? I think, and I'm, I'm going to level with you here. I think it's um, it's a hard game for anybody to hop in because you got to figure out what can you do that's new? What can you do that's one off from the next person, whether that's directing, whether that's photography, whether that's content creating, whether that's being an influencer. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether that's a TV personality or somebody who a uh, uh, fucking, you know what I'm saying, just a, a, a show a, a show host or whatever the case may be. Like, what can you do that's one off that the next person isn't doing? Because there's a fucking melting pot of yeah. somebody's probably already there. So yeah. you got to probably get to where you're the least Well, and you can really thrive. Yeah, but that's also you know? about understanding yourself because... The, the thing is, when you know who you are and you know what, what, how you want to represent things visually mm -hmm. and you understand your style or whatever it is, you know, when you know who you are, that's what makes you unique. See, because people always look outward. That's why there's trends and fads and like, you know, now everyone's doing this effect and then they'll do this effect. Talk and, that you know, shit, it's all James. that bullshit. That's all, that's superficial man, bro, bullshit. That shit bothers me. But here's me, the man. thing. Here's the thing. That's because of, that's all that. That's all that it's no one's it's not their fault, I think, of the people that are doing. It. I think that's if young young folks just they go fad first, trend first before what happened to the people like you and myself well, that created just, the trend? But I that think, created the fad to where I think you, it's just an evolution of process, you know what I mean? It's like it's it's we come up in an era or I, I mean I'm I'm sure I'm older than you, but like, you know How old are you? I'm 48 years old. 48 years yeah. old. Yeah, you got me by a little bit, but not by much. I played with G.I. Joe's too, buddy. I'm 48. Am I the <laughs> oldest person that's been on this uh, podcast? Is it? Wow. I know I'm you, white. You, I'm you white. Wearing, I'm well, fully white. And, I, and I've, I'm and i aging pretty good for a white guy. Um, and I, I owe it all to uh, staying out of the sun as an adult. <laughs> and uh, I spent a lot of time when I was a kid, and then I forget around what time, but I stopped at like 17. I'm like, fuck the sun. And so I think that's why I've been doing okay. Went straight Edward Cullen on us, huh? <laughs> oh, said yeah. fuck it at one point in time and just said fuck this. Yeah. I'm done well, with it. Well, I think, I think I'm, I'm one of those type of dudes that's like, I'm going to... I'm gonna look a little older, but at a, at a younger age. But then I'm gonna look that age for a while. Let me you know find I mean? out they wrote Twilight behind you. <laughs> let me find. Out. Let me fucking find out, bro. You were the reason Edward Cullen even fucking existed. That's hilarious. That's fucking funny. I'm just joking with you. Nah, man. man. I, listen, I love I, it. I I appreciate you for coming. I gotta. We gotta get moving. And I I, oh, I yeah. just love this combo, man. Like, and I hope. And I say this about a lot of people, like, and I hope they come back. I hope, because I, I, I love to have real organic conversations with overall real people. Yeah, man. You know, and I, and I feel like me and you just touched a space where the people can relate, yeah. you know, and the ones that don't, maybe this can help them. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Get to a place. James, I appreciate you coming in with me, man, and just for sitting sure. down with me for a second. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys having me, for sure. Thank you. We're going to chime on out. Hey, this was a sharp gumble special. The sharp tank. No jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Hey, Riley, you know what to do. Get that Glock out for us. <laughs>